Hey guys, today I have a Whirlpool HE washer. One thing that's kind of nice right off the bat with this one is that you get to set it to deep water wash versus the auto sensing. And I always like the deep water wash options. That way we're not gonna skimp on the water usage. And I've got it set just to a quick wash, pretty heavy load in here. I always run about four loads through and on the last load, kind of show you what's going on as if you're standing here yourself, checking it out, you get to see that everything's working perfect. That's how I like to shop and uh, spend my money. So that's how I like to sell my items. I always do a video. A soil level, we're just gonna set that to light. So this really isn't about how much water the machine's gonna use. This is a, des a designation for how long the machine's gonna agitate when it's in the wash cycle. So a little note about that there. We're just going cool on the temperature and it's adding water, getting started, kind of sensing how heavy this is gonna be. And it'll keep doing this for a while till it gets up to just about full submersion. Now typically this lid's gonna lock out and you wouldn't be able to open it up. But I just bought an extra one of these little strikers here. Put it in there. You can get those on Amazon for like 10 bucks. But I did that just so we could see what's going on here. And the machine's gonna lock out and think that it's locking. Now what it's gonna do first here, it's gonna sense, it's gonna agitate a little bit and then it'll continue to add more water until it gets up to a good deep water wash deep fill amount. And then we'll move into the actual wash cycle on our LEDs here. So um, in order to keep this video kind of short, I will allow it to finish filling all the way up and then I'll come back. Okay, so we're back. We've officially moved into the wash cycle. Full submersion on those clothes. So you can see not skimping on the water and this agitator is working correctly moving only in the clockwise direction. Little tip I give on these, if you're watching one of my videos for the first time, if you have one with an agitator like this, and you can reach in here and spin it freely in both directions, see I can spin it this way freely, but not back counterclockwise, that's how it should be. If you can reach in your washer and you can spin it freely in both directions, then your agitator's not working. You're essentially, your washer's just filling up, not agitating, draining, filling back up to rinse, draining, and nothing's actually getting clean, because this is how the vortexing motion here works. Clothes get vortexed down along the fins, along the clothes themselves, back up the side, and it just kind of repeats that. So you want to make sure that your agitator is working correctly, and this one's working great. It's got a nice strong agitation. All right, moving out of the wash cycle into the rinse cycle. It's draining that water out nice and fast. The here draining there over my heat running. See and hear that just fine. Draining nice and super fast. Always want to make sure that drain's working very efficiently. Now what it's going to do from here, it's going to spin out and extract that soapy water from the clothes. Then it'll fill back up, agitate for a bit with fresh water on the rinse cycle. Then it's going to drain that water out and we will be on to the final spin cycle at that point, which I'm going to come back for and show you that it sounds great. Nice smooth operation and everything's working perfect on that. And of course, this being the uh, fourth load here, always I always double check and make sure that this thing has absolutely no leaks. Lift the machine up, check underneath, check all around, uh, all the hoses and everything get checked. Not a single drop of water can be leaking out of these things anywhere. And not to have to worry about that with this one at all. This machine is actually in like new condition and it's only about two and a half, three years old. I think it was manufactured January 2019, so it's uh, not very old at all, has seen little usage. As you can see, everything's super clean. And then I went through and wiped everything down and kind of sanitized it head to toe. So here's that spin cycle for the rinse cycle now. As you can see, this one won't spin quite as fast as the final spin cycle, but it does a really good job extracting that soapy water, the used up water out. And my heat's running above us, so it's a little loud. I'll try to hopefully time it so that heat's not running once the final spin's going. But as you can see in here, even on that first spin, sounds great. All right. 
right, final spin cycle. Thankfully, my heat just kicked off there. And that's it there. Full speed. It'll get a little bit faster as those clothes get lighter. As it, the faster it goes, the more it extracts the water out. And it's just kind of a, a cycle that goes, it just keeps getting faster till it kind of max, maxes out. And it's gonna spin for a bit. Now on this quick wash, this all happens pretty fast. But if you go on a heavy duty or a super wash, then what you'll get is you'll get like three spins on the final spin where each time it goes a little bit faster, it um, works a little harder to extract um, the water out, assuming that it's a bigger, heavier load. But this one here is finished up pretty quick. It's done an excellent job. And this should be finishing up here pretty quick. So I'll go ahead and get the dryer, push it up side by side. You'll get to see that working um, here in just a minute. All right, guys, we have got these cleaned out now. Well, I got the washer all cleaned out. You can see, nice, huge capacity on that. This is what I was talking about with that agitator. You can't spin it back this way, but you can spin it freely this way. Another good tip, if you've got one of these newer style washers and you wanna make sure your shocks are good, all the suspension and all that's good, what you do is reach down in here with a couple of fingers and you push on this and essentially you'd know it was bad if you went to push on it and it started bouncing on you like a basketball but here i'm putting all of my weight on it and can just barely budge it there that's what you want that's how it's supposed to be but if you get to push in and it starts to bounce and you, know, you might look at having your shocks replaced but uh, all of that gets checked here and it's all in perfect shape there now we've got the dryer running come over here both of these are made by Whirlpool. This one was some of the last Kenmore, so it's just a couple years old as well. Uh, and all of these were made by Whirlpool towards the end there. Um, so we've got it running high heat. You can do some uh, temperature adjustment here. You've got your cycle signal. It's great that you can turn that off if you've got kids sleeping during the day or pets and you just don't want it on. Otherwise you can leave it on. You've got your lint trap right here. So you wanna make sure that gets changed out for every load, so you've got nice airflow there. And I'm gonna show you that it is in fact heating like it's supposed to. So right in between those two red dots, we take a surface temperature measurement. So it's colder down there on the ground, you can see. So let's go ahead and open this up. You see everything's tumbling like it's supposed to. Right inside the heating element tube is where it's gonna be the hottest. Uh, lots of heat coming out of that tube there. I'm gonna grab a couple pictures. And then uh, the air coming out is going to heat the inside of your dryer up anywhere from 95 up to 195. Just depends on how long it's been running, what you have your heat set as, which you can see huge capacity. Also, I'll note on here, this has been replaced. I did this here, and this is a high temp nylon rope basically glued in with uh, oven adhesive so it's not coming out of there it blocks the airflow and i've been using these for years if these ever come off it's a great tip it's uh super cheap you can pick them up at lowe's typically you can find it in white however at three different lows this is the only color they have so that's what i'm using because you can buy the expensive oven kits uh, i don't like them though i don't like the material that they use it's got like a fiberglass feel to it, and it's way overkill for these dryers, but that's what they recommend. Otherwise, they have some kits on Amazon that are super cheap, I don't like those either. I've been using these for going on six, seven years now. Never had a problem with them. They don't fray, they don't come out, the heat doesn't affect them, and they do an excellent job sealing up. This one's just a little bit festive, but I just thought I'd throw that out there. You might see that in the pictures. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and let that finish up. Go ahead and get these listed up for sale. If you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out. And I do appreciate you taking the time to watch my video. Thanks. You guys have a great day.